praise you. We, we worship you. We adore you, Lord. We thank you. Thank you for all that you do, Lord. We pray that your presence would be with us as we know you are. We pray, Lord, that you would move on our, this place. We pray, Lord, that you would speak to each heart. We pray, Lord, that you would make it clear. We pray, Lord, that we would uh, uh, all be blessed by this time and, and see something different that we didn't know before we got here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Michael. Bill, you got some scripture for us? Good afternoon. I'd like to start with the most important scripture I can remember. Second Chronicles 7:14. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and refrain from their wicked ways and seek my face, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. I'd also like to read Psalm 6620. Praise be to God, who has never refused to hear my prayer, nor turned his love away from me. You know, as a sinner saved by grace, that sure means a lot. Uh, I also would like to read Ecclesiastics 5, verse 19 and 20, which will tell you that with God, we have everything we need. Praise God for his word.
got one of my
<laughs> I did an ab workout and I can't breathe. <laughs> Put your hand. Put your hand. In the hand. Up a minute. Y'all gotta yeah. get the church clap.
what you say, breakthrough? Toasty. It is a little toasty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good toasty. Thank you. <laughs> toasty and tasty, huh? Thank you, Brad. <laughs> My brother always got a word, huh? <laughs>
Send us out to do the work you've called us to do. You've gathered us here for a reason today. This is the beginning of something, the beginning of a new work for each one of us. So we just thank you for that, Lord. We just thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, we want to thank the praise team. That, that those of you that haven't been here before, 
uh, the amazing stuff that they do. The Lord assembles these gifted, talented, anointed people in this room for year after year after year after year uh, for a purpose and for a reason. So we thank you for that. Um, there's a guy named Charles comes here and plays a saxophone for us, all those that, that know Charles. He's a gifted, gifted athlete. He may be a gifted athlete. He's also a gifted musician, anointed musician. Uh, and I've been told that a saxophone is the instrument that most closely approximates the human voice. Uh, so the saxophone can lead us into prayer, lead us into worshipful space. And, so we're, and he's going to be in Israel with Michael English uh, ministering uh, at this upcoming time. So I'm going to ask Charles to say a prayer for, uh, or ask yeah, Charles to say a prayer <laughs> uh, to pray for him. And then uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, we started letting you get to know the praise team a little bit more. So we're going to ask our Charles again here uh, to introduce himself a little bit and what the Lord's doing with his music and his ministry. And, and then Mark's going to come up uh, I'm back here and tell him about the uh, ministry that he has and to bring us a word of how Jesus is working through him and the people around him. So Charles, you would like to start us off, please? Can you hear me? I'm, wow. I'm super, super shy. Uh, because when I was a kid, my, my parents used to rock me a lot. And they used those big rocks. You missed that one. Anyway, no, I'm, I'm delighted to be here. Um, through the eyes of faith and just the depth of living, I've come to the conclusion that as a person who is a worshiper, a person who leads worship, that God doesn't really need me for worship to take place. I believe the first worship and praise service took place in the beginning between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And they probably had a serious worship time. But since then, God has enabled us to be participants of his praise and worship. So I'm delighted that, that I'm able to be a joint heir today to, uh, through the Son, a king's kid with royal blood running through my veins, a joint heir to the Father, one who has been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, uh, never to be the same again. And, you know, if you think about who we are in Christ Jesus, it should fire you up. No matter what you're going through, if you think about who you are in Christ Jesus, that should fire you up. Because the truth is, you belong to the royal family of God. See, at the point of salvation, you were passed from death into life. Do you know what took place when Jesus Christ took up residence in your life? You became a joint heir, okay? Member of the royal family of God. You became more than a conqueror through him who loves you. You now serve the Alpha and Omega, okay? That's Christ, the beginning and the end. Christ the King, he's our deliverer. Isn't that who he is? He's the eternal God. This is who... This is who lives in you. Keep in mind, don't get too excited now. <laughs> Faithful is his name. He's the glorious king, king of kings and lord of lords. That means above him there is no other. You can't outlive him and you can't live without him. Amen. Mighty God, prince of peace. Oh, my gosh, people are jumping off bridges because they don't have peace. And they're going everywhere to get it except but to the prince of peace. The great God of omnipresence, omniscience, and omnipotence. That means that no matter what you're going through, God not only knows because he's omniscient and he knows everything. He's not only with you wherever you are because he's omnipresence, but because he's the great God of omnipotence, he has the power to pull off whatever you need. That's who lives in you. The Prince of Peace. And I'm so excited today to be... Uh, People call me a worship leader, but you know what I've learned over the years of leading worship? That I don't like the title necessarily of worship leader, but instead lead worshiper. Amen. You see the difference? See, a worship leader feels the responsibility to lead the people in worship, but a, worship, a lead worshiper understands if I just get up there and lift up the name of Jesus and give God praise and glory and honor, they will see that and understand that the focal point is him. Amen? 
He created heaven and earth without me. He can pull off praise and worship without me. Okay? So I know that he is the one that deserves all the glory and honor and praise. Now, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. But without him, I can do nothing. I thank God that uh, he saw a guy living near the Motown area in Michigan and, and uh, loving music and said, I'm going to save that kid. And by his amazing grace, he saved me. And uh, when, I, when he saved me, I was singing all the Motown songs, just, just rocking with all the Motown songs. And you know what? I thought that when he saved me, that he would change my style of music. I got a little nervous. Guess what he changed? Not my style of music. That wasn't the problem. My lifestyle was the problem. So when he saved me and changed my lifestyle, then it changed my perspective on music. So now the issue of secular versus gospel, no longer issue for me. The issue is, do you know Jesus? And I believe that Jesus is our soon coming king. He's not coming back to take sides. He's coming back to take over because he's Lord. Amen. Above him. That, thank you, lady. One person got it. Let me try that again. Jesus Christ, Jesus the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, the anointed one of God, is not coming back soon to take sides. He's coming back to take over. Okay? Because he is Lord. And so I'm delighted to be here. I had a, the privilege of years and years and years of, of leading worship at Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship Church. And I remember looking in the audience and seeing Oscar and Linda Rohn and John and Gloria Reeves. And uh, so we go way, way back. And uh, I'm, just, I'm just so thankful today to the Lord that he let us be associated with a man who was so on fire for him that he wanted to share his faith all the time. Isn't that true? Smokey was the share his faith all the time. If you spend any time around him, it doesn't matter whether you met him on the bus, the train, or out on the street, you're going to hear about who? Jesus. Jesus. So what if that was duplicated in this room? And everybody in here decided, you know what? From now on, every opportunity I get, I'm going to tell somebody about Jesus. Each one reach one. I'm going to close with this. I learned some statistics years ago that 70% of all the people who come to Christ come as a result of one-on-one -on -one evangelism. And there's millions of dollars spent on tele-evangelism, but yet the majority of people that come to Christ come because of somebody sharing the love of Christ with them. Now here's the scary part. It seems like 90% of all the people who know Jesus are not sharing their faith. Standing on the promises, sitting on the premises. Okay? And that is so true with the word of God. The Bible says the harvest is ripe. But where are the laborers? There are few. So I want to encourage you in these last days that we're living in to be excited about who Jesus is in your life. But don't keep it to yourself. Because you may be the only Bible that that person reads that you encounter. Let, not make, but let your light so shine before men that they would see your good works and glorify our Father in heaven. Amen? Amen. 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 Pray for Barry. Okay. Okay, okay. Sure, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you so much that you are the God of omnipresence, that no matter where we go, no matter where Barry goes, Father, that you're with him. And not only are you with him, but your spirit lives in him. We ask now that you go before him, make his pathway straight, oh God. I pray that his communion with you would be sweet, his fellowship with you would be sweet, that his light would shine before the people that you bring before him, Lord, that they would see Christ in him. I thank you, Father, for the privilege you're going to give him to minister your love. And uh, I pray for traveling grace, Lord. Uh, just let him be in tune to your spirit, Father, and prepare to be a vessel of your use for your glory. And we thank you for it. We touch in the spirit right now and agree and count it as being done by faith in that name that's above all names. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thanks, Charles. Um, 
you know, as, as we come here, I was talking to Juan a little while ago when, when Smokey Pass went home to finish his ministry in heaven. Uh, yeah, he left us here. Uh, I've had this, and the next day, one of my architectural mentors died. So I lost two of my mentors in 24 hours. Uh, and I suddenly had this feeling that the mantle was being passed. Uh, and I've spoken about this before. The mantle is being passed to us in this room. Smokey started a great work here. And I think Smokey decided to go home and see what we'll do with what he started. Uh, and so I think the mantle has fallen upon each one of us to carry on the work that John started so powerfully and so wonderfully and so selflessly in this room. So it behoves, behoves each one of us to carry that on. Uh, we're going to have Mark come up in a minute and, and bring a word. But uh, also, um, I just think we, we need to prayerfully prayerfully find out what we're supposed to do and Juan and, and Brent had some conversations with John when he knew he was about to go be with the Lord uh, about some ideas what he'd like to see continue in this and sometimes we now in the first of the year they'll get that started I know Oscar's been in conversation with the boys about that uh, and Juan said that uh, probably the first of the year they will start and we're not sure what that is so each one of us right now is a caretaker uh, we're protecting a ministry that John has started. Let's pray about it. Let's feed into it. Um, let's uh, feed into it prayerfully, spiritually, so this grows. And John's personality was so much a part of this. His personality is no longer here, but his spirit is certainly here, and the spirit of the Lord is certainly here to carry this ministry on. So we, we want to continue that. So between now and next Tuesday, continue to pray about where we go with this. It's ours now. It's ours now. It always belonged to Jesus, and John was the was the, uh, uh, the servant that carried out Jesus' work in this room. Well, he's now passed that on to us. Let us not let this fail. Let us not let this diminish in any way. Let's each one of us pick up the mantle and pick up the torch and, and walk forward with this. It may be different, um, and if I know the Lord's work when he stops something, when he starts it over again, it gets bigger and better. Uh, and I think it behooves us to continue that. Uh, I'm going to have Mark come up now. Mark's a minister, and he's also, I was talking to him briefly before the meeting, uh, he's, he's working in a ministry that has to do with first responders. Uh, and we know that the devil has really done some terrible work in the last five or ten years of, of coming between uh, the first responders and the people they serve. There's a lot of really difficult stuff going on out there. And I think talking to Mark, the only way that's going to get fixed is with the intervention of the power of God himself. And, and, and Jesus can reconcile the relationship between the community and the people that God has raised up to protect that community. And that's where his ministry is. So uh, I want to turn it over to him and, and uh, let him show how Jesus is working through this young man and the people around him to start bridging that gap and reconciling, healing, healing the relationship between the community and the people that God's raised up to protect them. So, Mark. Wow, um, it's humbling to be here with you guys today, and it's an honor uh, to be a part of this legacy uh, because we are that living legacy uh, of those people that influenced our lives. Um, there's multiple people in my life that I'm now a part of their leg living legacy, and so I'm saying, Lord, what do I want my legacy to be like because I want to live my life on purpose. And what is it that I want to leave behind? Because if I don't know what I want to leave behind, then that means I may do things and go down, go down roads and places that really have no purpose. Um, my name is Mark Bowling. Uh, I've been a pastor here in Dallas-Fort Worth for 26 years. Uh, I'm still a pastor, but I'm not a pastor at a church. Uh, so I've been uh, on staff at Gateway Church for the last eight years. And, uh, and whenever I walk in ministry, and my wife and I, when we walk in life, we walk like this as we walk with our hands because we are a steward of what God has given us. And as soon as we go like this, then that means we have control. And I can tell you this, I don't have control. And you don't want me to have control because if I have control, it's going to be all messed up. So um, uh, the Lord has closed the door for my ministry at Gateway. I found out in May my position was being eliminated through transitions and different roles of ministry. And I said, Lord, if you want me to stay here and have purpose and still have impact, then I want to be here. And if you want me in the, in the private sector, I want to be there. And if you want me in a ministry or another church, I want to be there. I want to be in the middle of his will. 
And that's easy for me to say, but how many of you have kids? Okay, so my wife and I had this conversation and it was long on our part, it was short on God's part, is we said, you know, we want our kids to be in the middle of God's will. And the Lord said, well, what if I call your daughter to Africa? And we're like, well, we don't like that. And we don't want her to go to Africa unless we go with her. But the reality is, is I would rather her be 4,000 miles away from me in the middle of God's will than right beside me outside of his will. And so with that is the Lord has, has brought, uh, I connected with a ministry called Shield 616 two and a half years ago, uh, just after the July 7th shooting uh, of five Dallas police officers. Uh, that actually happened on my oldest son's birthday, July 7th. Uh, and so I'll never forget that day. And during that time and that season is there was a lot of people rallying around first responders. Has anybody ever had a, a, a good um, story or a good relationship with a first responder, whether it be police, fire, for, you know, EMT, things like that? Has anybody had a bad experience with a first responder? Okay, notice my hands up as well. You know what? We're all human. And one of the things that most people don't realize is we're asking our first responders and officers to do things that we would never do, which is to run into danger to protect us. Uh, I was telling, telling somebody earlier about this flag on my, on my arm. If you could see it, it's actually backwards. You notice that? The stars should be on the right-hand side. This is what's called a charging flag. And so, and it's a thin blue line, and the thin blue line represents what keeps society within its bounds without, you know, the thin blue line sometimes is what keeps things from being anarchy and chaos uh, to being in order rather than disorder. And, and the enemy wants to create disorder. And so this is a charging flag, which is what has been asked of first responders, which is to charge into danger when danger arises, to address a threat if a threat arises. And, you know, as Christians, we have you know, scripture to fall back on to give us guidance. You know, in Ephesians 6, which is what uh, Shield 616 is based off of, Shield 616, um, you know, it says our struggle is not against flesh and blood, uh, but against rulers, against authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. How many of you have ever stepped out of community, Christian community, and into your own area uh, and been separated from the flock? Is there anybody? Okay. It's a lonely place. It's a dangerous place, and that's the place that the enemy wants to keep us. You know, if you ever, I don't know if you ever knew, you know, you had the shepherd back in the day, and you had the shepherd's staff. Do you know what the shepherd's staff was used for? Okay, it was. So if a sheep got down on a cliff, is he, he would use that staff to pull, you know, put it under its legs and hook it and pull it back up. But then do you know what he did? He took that staff, and he broke the sheep's leg, and he did it because he loved them. Because at that point, he had to carry that sheep for four to six weeks or however long it would be. He'd have to feed that sheep. He'd have to take care of that sheep and protect that sheep. That sheep now knew his voice. He knew his smell. He knew that he loved him. He knew that he cared for him. I don't know about you, but the Lord has used his staff on me. I'm, I've, been, I've been hit upside the head. I, you know, I, I'm that hard-headed kind of guy. Uh, I was... Shot with a 30 out 6 from 500 yards away. Uh, the bullet came across my body, and it went in this hole, and it blew out the hole that big around. That was the first day I went deer hunting. It was the last day I went deer hunting. <laughs> I didn't have that much fun. So what the enemy wants to do is he wants to separate us from the body of Christ because then we're easy to pick off. That is exactly what's happening with first responders. That's what's happened over the last 5 to 8 to 10 years with first responders is first responders no longer drive their police car home to eat lunch with their family because they don't want people to know where they live. They are a different breed. They're a different bunch. They're always on alert. They're always, they look through lenses that we don't look through. They see society. They see cars. They see situations uh, that I would just drive right past and I'd have no idea. Well, the enemy wants to separate them, and that's what's happened through society because of that small 2 or 3% loud minority that speaks out against first responders, anti-ICE, anti-whatever it may be. And so the reality is, is we have a responsibility to help. And in Christ, what he did is, is when I look through scriptures, is he met people's needs and then he ministered to them. He met their needs and then he ministered to them. Because when their needs were met, 
They didn't have anything to worry about, and they could receive. And that's what Shield 616 is about. I'll go on. It says, therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground after you've done everything to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. Now think of this as a police officer. You know, they wear the belt that carries their gun and their, their handcuffs and stun guns, things of that nature. Um, with the breastplate of righteousness uh, in place and with their feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, which is what uh, Shield 616 is about. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. This was a scripture that Jake uh, Skifstead, our founder, he's out of Colorado Springs. This is a scripture that the Lord gave him when he was praying about a name. Uh, he was a Colorado Springs police officer. He was in the New Life Church shooting. Pastor Brady Boyd, uh, at what the time was one of the largest churches in Colorado. Um, he was in at that shooting when it when it ended. Uh, the uh, um, the the gentleman ended up committing suicide after he was engaged by first responders on site at the church. And then a year and a half later on Black Friday, he was in the Planned Parenthood shooting. He was a part of SWAT. And he was in the Planned Parenthood building for five hours trying to find this gunman. This gunman had four fully loaded AK-47s. Um, all his bullets would go through every wall, interior and exterior. And he said this, he said, we were outgunned, we were outmatched, we were out everything. And I might as well have worn the shirt you were wearing right now because it would protect me against, the, nothing would protect me that I had against this type of a threat. They ended up losing five people in that. Um, an officer was killed along with five individuals. Um, so what Shield 616 does is we meet the needs of first responders. Is Most people don't know, but what first responders or police officers are given by their departments is this type of a jacket right here, uh, which is just a, a uh, pistol rated vest. Uh, if you wear this up against a rifle, you're dead meat. You're outgunned and you're outmatched. Um, police departments can't afford the next step of level of protection, which is what, uh, which is what we do. Uh, and these are what's called rifle rated. These are uh, level three rifle rated plates, which will stop an AK, uh, AR-15, AK-47, and a 308. Uh, which this plate right here has actually been shot three times. Well, actually one, two, three, four, five times at 10 yards away. And as you can see, it wasn't. It didn't pierce the armor. And so we want to provide physical armor for our first responders at no cost to them. Uh, it's $2,100 an officer. It's the best of the best. Angel Armor was actually started by a, uh, uh, how many of you have an OtterBox on your phone? Uh, the OtterBox family is what I'll call them. I won't say their names, but um, they started OtterBox. It's a multi-billion dollar business. Um, the two sons don't have to work. Uh, they can retire. And they said, we want to have an impact on, and we want our story to be, you know, to, to have a, a purpose in our life. So they're the ones that actually created armor, uh, Angel Armor. Strong Christian family, very large donors, givers, things of that nature. Um, and so uh, this is right now the best of the best. There is a level four plate that could actually be adhered to the front of this. Uh, it has magnets in it, and you guys can take a look at this. Um, but these vests and plates used to weigh 32 pounds, and now they weigh seven with this technology. And it actually, they can wear it all day under their normal clothes. So it fits inside this vest and they can wear it because in the uh, Planned Parenthood shooting, the, the guy was shooting through the police cars. So your police cars provide you no protection against it. So as in Ephesians 6.16, we want to put on the breastplate of righteousness. We want to put on the helmet of salvation. This is the same thing that Navy SEALs use. Um, in the, uh, the nightclub in Florida, the, the homosexual nightclub where the shooting occurred, uh, one of the guys that... Uh, address the threat was actually shot right here and it stopped the uh, the rifle round and so this is what this is what we provide them but one of the things that I find interesting is you know I talked about the charging flag and the Lord has charged us with something and one of the things that's not covered in the full armor of God is you notice there's nothing on the back because who has our back he's got our back well, he does, but our heart is to build relationship with the community. So we provide them the back plate and the front plate as well. 
um, along with the vest and the helmet. But here's, here's what Shield 616 is about. Ultimately, what it is about is every officer that receives this gear is we have a vest presentation and a member of the body of Christ, a member of a local church, local community, they adopt those officers, they meet them at the helmet and vest presentation, they stand behind them and we pray over them, we pray over their gear, their family is invited, the officer's family, and then what we do is they exchange information because what our heart is is to bring them back into the fold of the community. We want them to come to your church. We want them to build that relationship. At Gateway Dallas, we did 25 officers. Um, and for those of you that are in church and you have police officers that do ingress, egress for parking, you know, and letting people out, we now have, we now have those officers that want to come to Gateway Dallas. Uh, three of them are actually now members uh, of Gateway Church. Um, a lot of them don't live local and things of that nature. But our whole purpose is meeting their need so that we can be the hands, feet, and voice of Christ to them and their family. And to adopt an officer, there's no cost. It is, we want you to pray for them on a daily basis. We give you a magnet with their name that goes on your fridge or where you want it, want to put it. That way, every time you see it, you pray for them. You have their phone number or their email. Call them. You know what? Invite an officer here. Invite an officer. Hey, you know what? Okay. So it's a little bait and switch, but come to lunch. It's the best <laughs> lunch you'll ever have. You know, I mean, that type of thing. Invite them to come here and to be a part and to hear what it's all about. Because Jake, our founder, when he was in Planned Parenthood, he said, I know if I die where I'm going, but I don't think these guys know where they're going. And so we really, truly have that opportunity to be Christ's voice and hands by providing the armor of the Lord. Not just physical protection. Our tagline is protecting our protectors. But that's physical and spiritual. And in that is the Lord has opened up some incredible doors. Um, December 30th, if you want to put it on your calendar, it's a Monday at 1130. Um, Shield, uh, I'm sorry, ESPN has a, has a football bowl game. It's called the First Responders Bowl. And this June, they came to us, they came to Shield 616, and they said, we, our tagline is a great game for a greater cause. We have the great game. Would you be the greater cause? And we said, well, you realize we are a Christian nonprofit ministry. And they said, yes, and we don't care. We want you to do what you do. So we've been raising funds to outfit 616 for Shield 616, 616 first responders, um, and uh, have them come down on the field at the halftime show, the people that are adopting them. So it's the Shield 616 halftime show. And this is how the Lord is moving. I've been, we did all of Texarkana Police Department about a month ago. We did 50 in Abilene, uh, 50 police officers. We're getting ready to do in two Mondays. Uh, 144 Tarrant County sheriffs and deputies. We've got Grand Prairie, Denton, Flower Mound, uh, Highland Village, and all over the place. Uh, and so these departments are coming to us saying, we need help because they don't have budget for this. So with that, is, let us pray. God, we thank you for giving us the tools and showing us in the scripture of what we need to do on a daily basis by putting on the full armor of God, by being your hands and your feet and your voice. And God, I pray, uh, just as, as Smokey John did, is may we be your voice every day, everywhere we go. May we not overlook the, the smallest of them all to be able to see the ones you know, further down the road. May we not miss that moment. And God, I pray for our first responders, for our police, our fire, our EMTs. God, I pray for them first of all, physically, that you protect them, you protect their families. I pray uh, for them mentally. God, there's, there's so much um, um, PTSD. We think of it as something in the military, but God, first responders, our, our fire and, and EMTs see things that we would never even imagine. Protect them mentally, protect them emotionally from becoming uh, segregated and off by themselves from their families, from their friends, from their co-workers, from society. Bring them into the fold and show us how to put your arms and wings of love and protection around them. And God, I pray that you bless them financially. They don't do what they do for the money. But God, I pray that you bring supernatural blessings upon them and their family that exceed their wildest dreams because they have submitted to a calling. And that calling is to protect and serve. They're our first responders. God bless them in everything that they do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
Thanks, Mark. Um, I just met Mark before uh, the meeting and got visiting for a little bit. Uh, I think what this is, is saying to me, you know, ministry is so long we sit around and, and minister to each other inside the churches and minister to each other over lunch. Sometimes, sooner or later, we've got to start taking it into the highways and byways and going after those broken and lost people and the people that are struggling, the people that are uh, the devil's really getting after. I know Stanley talks about it all the time, you know, Dr. Breakthrough about, uh, he said something that really changed my whole ministry. You never know Jesus is all you need until you get to the point where Jesus is all you got. Uh, and if you've never been in that broken place, uh, then, then that's where ministry's got to go. And I think that what John started here, the heart of this, is reaching out to, to people that are broken, and Oscar ministers to those kind of people, and a lot of people in this room do. Uh, and I think that's the heart of, this, of this, this group that comes here. I don't even call it a church. This is just a fellowship that comes here that, that's seeking Jesus and wants to spread the word of Jesus Christ and the transforming power of being saved in Jesus Christ. Uh, so we want to do that. Tawanda, come up and close us in prayer, please. This is a praying lady right here, I tell you. Everyone, just give God praise, give him the honor, give him the glory. We just thank you right now, Father, for being able to come to this fellowship. We thank you, Father, that we are the legacy carriers right now, Father, that we are the legacy carriers and that we receive the mantle that has been released unto each and every one of us. We thank you, Father, for a special anointing that destroys the yokes. We thank you, Father, that we are discerning of the times right now and that we are the ones that have the Issachar anointing to discern the seasons and the times, and that we know how to respond within those seasons and within those times. We thank you, Father, how you guide the feet of the righteous, Father. We just thank you right now, Father, that you will lead us as we walk into new levels in this new era right now, Father, that you continue to equip us with your word, Father, that we walk out boldly before you, Father. We know that you are the one that leads us and guides us into every truth. We just thank you, Father, that your, our faith right now waxes strong and that it abates anything that would cause fear to rise up in us. We thank you, Father, as we are praying right now for how this ministry is going to be launched, carrying the mantle that we have been entrusted with. We just thank you right now as we cover each and every person here, their ministries, their businesses, Father, and their callings, Father, that they'll be made Sure, we just thank you that we've covered each and every person in the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. Tell somebody Jesus loves them this week. We'll see you next Tuesday. Good Lord willing.